So let's talk about the design. The first thing you're going to need is some logos or some insignia. And the simple answer for that is the internet. Um, it's a pretty low probability that whatever you need won't be out there someplace. There are websites dedicated specifically just to uh, logos, and you can download them in uh, multiple formats. So you shouldn't have too much trouble finding those. You can also scan them. Um, if you've got an old decal sheet and you want to just scan off of those and you've got a scanner, you can get uh, JPEG files that way. I've also heard of people actually painting or drawing the design directly onto the decal paper. Um, you know, if you've got superb art skills and you can paint your own nose art, hey, that would be pretty cool, and you could do it that way. So um, there's, there's, there's multiple options for getting your, your insignia, but if you're like me, all you do is go to the internet and download them and bring them into the app that you're going to use for uh, creating your layout. Now, I use Photoshop because um, that's what's familiar to me and uh, it makes things relatively easy, but you don't have to. Uh, you can use anything. Uh, you can use Corel Draw, you can use Microsoft Paint, you can use something free from the internet like GIMP. Um, or if all you're doing is a uh, something like a tail number, here's an example of that. This is the tail number for the Piper Cub, you can just do it in Microsoft Word uh, or something else. As long as you can control the font and the size and the color, you're all good. So keep it simple. Do whatever, you know, do whatever makes the most sense for you. This is a good point to talk about, however, uh, something that could be important to you, and that is scaling. Um, when you download your logos, let's say you do it from the internet, they're going to be at a certain resolution and, and you'll be able to look at the file and tell that it's say, uh, you know, 200 by 200 pixels. And that's not really going to be very important for most things you'll do because they're going to be of a small enough size that they'll print just fine. And the way that you kind of know that is that the standard for printing on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper is 300 uh, ppi, or pixels per inch. And so if you've got a file that's 200 pixels by 200 pixels, and you know that that's going to be a, say, a stars and bars insignia that's only an inch or two wide, that's going to be plenty good enough resolution for that. Now, if you're doing something like I was with the Red Bull logos and you have to scale them up larger, then you may run into an issue which you've all seen if you tried to blow up a JPEG photograph and it got jagged where you could see all of the little pixels along the edges. Now, even, even in my case, when I had to uh, uh, upsize the logos for the Red Bull plane, it wasn't too bad because even though there were some jagged edges, they weren't visible unless you were really looking through a magnifier. But if you run into a situation where you've got to upscale a logo, it might be important to understand the two different types of image files. The most common is a bitmapped image, and that's what you're dealing with when you talk about JPEGs and what you're going to work with if you're in a graphics program like Photoshop. But most graphics that are created in an application like Adobe Illustrator, for example, are vector images. And that means that they're basically represented by a line of connected dots that runs around the edge of each color separation. And the reason that they do that is because that makes them infinitely scalable. So you can take something that starts out the size of, of, uh, of your fist and scale it up to the size of a billboard if need be and not ever get any jagged edges. So uh, that's just something to be aware of if you are going to get into uh, you know, a situation where you've got to really blow something up, but most likely not going to be a problem for you and uh, bitmap images, JPEGs will be just fine. 
Now, here is the time to talk about uh, the second big issue that you've got to consider when you're designing your, your, your decals, and that is your colors. Most colors are going to be fine, especially if you're just printing plain black uh, and you're going on to clear decal paper. You'll have no issues. Um, but you can have problems. Um, one thing to be aware of is that even though the decals look really bright and fantastic on the paper, as soon as you slide them off of there and onto the surface of your model, you're going to find out that they are much more translucent than you'd think. And to the point where you may even be able to see through them uh, onto the surface of the model itself. If the model is a solid color and the decal is a light color, that's probably not going to be too much of an issue. But if you're laying a decal, say like a stars and bars that's got a white background, across a color separation, like say a place where camouflage changes from green to brown, or like on my Mustang where I had the uh, I had the I had these bull logos laying right across a color separation going from gold to blue. And it turned out that the decals were translucent enough that I could see that color separation right through the decal paper and the ink. Here's a good example. This little car body is my test mule. And if you look closely at the decal on the hood, you'll see that even though it's on white paper, that you can see the decal underneath it. So that is a potential issue that you've got to be aware of. And there's a couple of different ways that you can solve it. The way that I solved it on the Red Bull Mustang is that I had to uh, paint the white backgrounds because every one of those Red Bulls had a white outline. And I learned pretty quickly that my decals were not going to be trans not going to be opaque enough, uh, even on white paper, to work. And so um, I ended up having some uh, masks cut out of vinyl and uh, did that off of, of, uh, of vector images. I converted my JPEGs to vectors and had a local sign place cut those masks out for me. And then I was able to just stick those down to the surface and use them like a stencil and spray my white background and then put the the just the red portion of the of the bull logo on top of it and not only did that solve my translucency problems but it made my colors pop brightly the way that I wanted them to um, you may not have to go to that extreme though you may be able to just brush on a little bit of white paint or create a little mask for just the area that you need using uh, you know cutting it out of masking tape and airbrush on a white background or you may be able to cut a backing decal out of just plain white decal paper and put that down. That's something that Tamiya does um, uh, with my Spitfire kit that I built a few months ago. All of the British red and blue roundels were two-part decals. You had to put the white part down before you put the red and blue part down for the exact reason that I'm talking about. So it's a little bit of a hassle, but it's something to be aware of if you're going to have a white background. And this also gets to another fundamental thing about decals is that you can't print white. So when you're designing them and you're thinking about you know, how this is all going to go down, you've got to take that into account. You can print on white paper, like I've said, and cut the appropriate shape, but again, you may not have the opacity that you need. Um, just as kind of an aside, the only way that you can print on white decal uh, or print a white decal is um, either to use silk screening, which I believe is what the, the factories do for kit decals, or you can get a special printer. Now, for a while, there was a printer called an ALPS printer that was available from Japan that you could buy, and it would print white ink. You can still find those on eBay for about 500 bucks, but... 
I don't think it'd be worth doing because my understanding is that uh, ALPS is going to stop making the ink cartridges for those things uh, this year, and that option will be gone. There's another printer out there that's pretty neat uh, that you could buy to do it, but it costs about 3500 bucks. So if you're in a situation where you absolutely must print white, the best thing to do is to go out there and find a third-party vendor who can uh, take your files and print them for you. And, and those folks are out there, uh, and, and they do that. So just be aware, um, white may be your undoing when you're thinking about your custom decal uh project. Okay, so now that you have uh, figured out how to get your logos and uh, how to get everything laid out and designed, uh, let's talk about how to print. Now the first thing that you're going to need for that is your paper and I want to talk for a second about the choices that I made in selecting uh, my paper. I tried out uh, I tested on my little test mule here uh, with several different paper brands. And the thing that I found with this uh, Papilio paper is that even in the clear version that it was quite a bit thicker than the, uh, than the, than the inkjet paper from World Paper. And that was true for both the clear and the white. So uh, I've basically decided that the World Paper is going to be my go-to paper for doing my own decals. Um, when I need to print something on white, like I did for the little placards in the Piper Cub, um, I, let's see, I've got a sheet of those. Yeah, this sheet right here is actually uh, on world paper white. And you can see that what I did is right up there at the top, I had them printed. And they were just black with white lettering. And so what I did is I just cut exactly around the uh, edges of the black to, you know, to get what I needed and not have a, a white border. That's a pretty simple situation. For something like a tail number, then I would use the Papilia or the uh, World Paper Clear. You can see that I would be able to just cut all the way around that um, but, again, something to think about with that is that even with the thin, clear paper, what I've found is that the edge of the decal film is probably going to show on the surface of your model. So, um, this kind of goes back to when you design your decals and do your layout, thinking about how you're going to cut them out for the final application. Um, I'm actually uh, have made the decision that I'm not going to use my custom printed tail number decals uh, on the Piper Cub for that very reason. I don't want the edge of the film to show. So I'm going back to my vinyl sign cutter and I'm going to have her cut me some stencils for the tail numbers that I'll just stick on here and then airbrush black. So. You know, those are just considerations, uh, you know, for when you're doing your design and selecting your paper. Okay, so now once you've got your printer, um, once you've got your, your, your paper uh, and you're ready to go to the printer, um, there's really only one thing you need to know, and that is put your printer on highest quality photo. Uh, that's going to be the setting that will put down the right amount of ink for a smooth, glossy surface like you have on this decal paper. Uh, it's very similar to uh, high gloss photo paper. So most printers should be able to handle that fairly well and it should be uh, pretty painless. Once you've got your decals printed, give them at least 20 or 30 minutes to dry. Um, you can find out pretty quickly with the finger smudge test that when they come off of the printer, the ink is still not completely set, even though uh, you may think it is. And if you make the mistake of going ahead and spraying your fixative right away, uh, your ink will start to run. Ask me how I know. That's how we learn, right? Hopefully those are lessons you only have to learn once. But when you get to that point where the ink is dry and you're ready to uh, spray on your fixative, 
basically what I did is I just lay the paper down flat in my spray booth and I spray, you know, about eight inches away and I make a pretty quick pass because this stuff in particular uh, goes down thick and fast and you want, for obvious reasons, the thinnest coating of the fixative that you can get and still do the job. And all you're doing with that is making sure that you've got a waterproof barrier for when you um, actually go to uh, uh, dip the uh, decals into the water. So don't hose it down and once it's sprayed take your take your paper and just kind of hold it at an angle in the light so that you can see the reflection and you can make sure that you've got good coverage over the area where your decal is, has been printed. And then let it sit overnight and get good and dry before you do anything with it and you'll be ready for the next step. Okay gang, so now we've got our decals completely designed and printed and prepped and it's time to apply them. Now I know you guys all know how to apply decals, but things are a little bit different with DIY decals. And I want to show you a couple of those, and I'm going to attempt to actually do an on-camera demonstration, which, given how slow I'm, slowly and clumsily I move, is pretty ambitious, but just bear with me. Okay, one thing you've got to consider when you are thinking about cutting these things out is that the entire decal sheet is decal film. It's not like your normal decal sheet where the film only goes right around the edge of the insignia or the logo. So, when you do this, you're going to be sliding off everything that's on the paper. And that can be a little bit of a, of a, of a hassle, especially if you do it the way that I like to. I'm going to show you that here real quick. But first, let me show you. I want you to imagine that the decal that I need is just the portion of the Red Bull's butt there that's in the uh, uh, black outlined rectangle. And you'll notice that I've only completely cut it off on one side. The other three sides where the black line are, are just scored through. I didn't worry about trying to slice completely through the decal paper with my hobby knife. And you'll see how that's going to work here in just a second. And you'll also see how fast these things come off of the paper. All right, so. I've got my decal, I've got in my uh, handy dandy gripper tweezers here, and this is how I do my decals. I've got my bottle of decal water here, and I'm going to just stick that in there. I'm going to let it sit there for a minute, not even a minute. I can use some, usually I even just take it right back out and let it, and let it just sit, but for one this large, uh, it's not a bad idea to just let it hang out in there for a second. This is actually a trick that I learned from watching young Alex on Chris and Alex Modeling. And it made my decaling much, much easier to do it this way because trying to catch them when they're floating around inside there is a total pain in the ass. All right, now I'm looking in here and I can see that this thing is already starting to lift just that quick. So now I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to just take and make sure you guys can see this on the camera there and that I don't spill anything. Just going to slide it right off of there. See that? My handle is still attached to the paper. And the decal is now where I want it to be. And I'm going to move it around a little bit there. that decal water that's got micro set in it is working well to soften things up and make it easy to position and then I'm just taking a q-tip and kind of getting rid of the uh, excess water no big deal doesn't look too bad you can see that it's not exactly conforming to the surface, but it's not too bad. And I'm going to take care of that by immediately, and I don't have to do this immediately, but there's kind of no point in waiting. 
but uh, I'm going to just get some micro saw and uh, a cheap paintbrush and I'm going to just brush on a nice layer of micro saw over the whole thing. Done deal. In about, I don't know, about three or four hours, that decal is going to be sucked down on there like it was painted in place. And everything will be happy, happy. And I will come back and show you the result so you can see that. Okay, gangsters, I'm back. And it is three to four hours later. Uh, you can tell because uh, it's dark now. And as promised, we have a decal that is almost perfectly laid down flat. It's got one corner that uh, has, has flipped over. But uh, otherwise, it's pretty good. Let me see if I can move the light over here and put this right here where you can see it. Okay, whoops. Okay, so check that out. You can see that, that decal has sucked itself down there pretty well. All right, now. For the last trick of the night, I'm going to show you something that could come in handy. You hope you never need a trick like this, but it's good to know that it exists uh, if you do. Occasionally you'll get one of these things that won't go down properly. I had uh, that happen a couple of times. Or you get the wrong decal on there, or it's not lined up properly, or whatever the case may be and you might need a way to remove said uncooperative decal so that you can have a do-over. So what I'm doing here is I'm just burnishing a piece of masking tape down on top of that really tightly and I'm going to go, oh, it didn't come off. I'm surprised. Okay, well. Let's try a different trick, because I do want to show you that this can be done, and surprisingly easily. I'm just going to get a knife blade going under there a little bit. Grab some tweezers here. This decal film will surprise you with how tough it is. And I have had good luck on a couple of occasions in yanking it off with a piece of masking tape, but that was on a glossy surface, and that may make some difference because this was just a flat primer surface. But you can see that I've gotten some, uh, gotten some lift on it, and there we go. I've yanked it right off. Now, in this case, it did take the... Uh, it did uh, also... <laughs> 
did a good job of peeling the primer off as well, which, you know, would not be a good situation if you were actually up against this. But hopefully if you were actually doing this, you'd be putting the decal down on top of a gloss varnish and trust me, it would it would pop right up uh, with the masking tape and it would not rip the, the paint off. This is just some Vallejo primer that I shot on here uh, yesterday. And uh, we all know that Vallejo primer will peel pretty easily. So that's my excuse for that. Okay, guys, so that wraps it up. That is my very first and uh, I guess depending on the response maybe my very last how-to video. I know it's long and lots of detail but um, it's uh, like I said it's a it's a topic that I haven't really seen a complete um, tutorial on on YouTube yet. It may be out there and I just didn't look hard enough but trust me I looked a lot when I was trying to learn how to do all this so anyway I hope that it's good information I hope it's complete and that uh, there's enough there that if you decide you want to tackle printing your own decals, that uh, it'll help you out. And if you have any questions or comments or corrections or whatever, um, don't hesitate to let me know down in the comments, all right? And if you're still watching, as always, I appreciate it, guys. All right, much love. Take care.